don't be that person that leaves the centerfeet dirty. Quick tip is that depending on the size, you can either use a twisted up Kim wipe or a paper towel. And what you can do is you can actually just use this, twist it up and use that to kind of push it in and out. If you need some help getting to the bottom, you can take like a screwdriver um, to help or tweezers or a serological pipette. Um, but when you're using, especially when you're using a metal tool, you want to make sure that you're not scraping against the sides. These rotors are really, really expensive. Um, so make sure that you always have it like kind of wrapped around and you're not directly touching the, um, touching the rotor inside. A Kim wipe works really well for if you're doing just like a small little micro centrifuge um, holder and that's also really good because you can't just take those things out and like with one of these you can actually like wash it out and you can dry it out and stuff like that. Not that well, it's hard to dry which is why the paper towel comes in really handy. Um, but with those little ones that are stuck in there, um, this is kind of one of your only options and you can use like a pipette tip to help you get it in and out, um, making sure that you're not like actually getting this trapped inside of there. Um, and yeah. Of course, it's better not to get those rotors dirty in the first place. And so what you want to do is when you're centrifuging, you want to make sure that you're wiping off the tubes. If you had your tubes on ice, you want to wipe off that ice. Um, even though that's not really grungy, it can still get in the buckets and then the buckets get wet and then they can grow mold and all this gross stuff. Plus, if you have ice on the side of your tube, that's going to influence the weight. So when you're going to balance, you want to wipe off before you do your scale, you're weighing out, um, and then you want to wipe it off again before you put it into the rotor bucket, bucket, whatever you call that. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't overfill your tubes. So if you have a little ice on the outside, you get a little water in there, that could be easy enough to just like dry it out. But sometimes you actually get gunk in there and then you might actually have to like kind of actually really clean it out rather than just dry it out. And the reason why you're getting gunk in there is because what's going to happen is if you overfill your tubes, um, so you want to make it so that when you're holding the tube that the outside, the liquid doesn't like actually touch the side, the, the O-ring. You don't want it to actually be touching the cap because that's indicating that's probably some of it's going to leak out when the centrifuge goes really, really fast. And when it leaks out, it can get into that rotor bucket and make you have to clean it. Um, and it can also get out into the wider um, centrifuge, into the vacuum oil and all this stuff and cause all those problems that the maintenance has to come out like and fix it all the time. That's what happened in my old lab, so don't do that. After every run, just in case you want to make sure you want to go and you want to look down, look inside the rotor buckets. Um, do you see any gunk in there? Is it wet? If so, clean it out. Um, so look before and after you do your runs. Um, keep these things clean. We often keep these rotors in the refrigerator so that they're cold and ready to go when we go to um, spin down our proteins and stuff. We can cool down the centrifuge, but it's going to take a long time to cool down a big metal thing. And so we just keep it in the fridge so it's ready to go when we have the centrifuge cool down. Um, and yeah, so just be a good lab citizen. Don't leave gunk in the centrifuge um, and clean out your centrifuge and enjoy your centrifuging.